8th grade math, test 27. First problem, we have to simplify the expression that they gave us in the problem. And so the way we do that is we go inside the parentheses first. And inside the parentheses, we add those two exponents. That's how we multiply powers at the same base. When I add those two using teams, I see I have more positives and negatives. Now, when I have exponent x to exponent, it's called power of power. That's what we multiply. So it's 8 to the negative second power. So when I uh, simplify expression 1, just like we did inside here, we add all these up. Don't forget there's a 1 there, so I get 8 to the 6. That's not the same. And expression 2, when I'm dividing powers at the same base, the shortcut to that is to copy the base, subtract the exponents. So 34 take away 36 is negative 2. That's the same. So example 2 is part of my answer. Now for example 3, it's a mixture of those two. First thing I want to do is the top. I'll go ahead and copy the base and add the exponents. And then from there I will do what I did on the last one, which is to subtract the exponents. So I have negative, <coughs> excuse me, sorry about that, negative 1 minus negative 3. And when I do the rule for subtraction, I actually get a positive 2, so that's not the same. And for expression 4, 1 over 64, well, if I were to simplify 8 to the negative second, negative exponent we learned in class means to flip. That's 1 over 8 squared, so it's the same as 1 64th. My answer is 2 and 4. Number 2 says find the value for the x that makes the equation true. In other words, solve this. So number two, get over here to number two. Number two, I'm going to go ahead and do my rule for subtraction, right? Do my rule for subtraction. So I'll separate both sides of my equation. I'll do my rule for subtraction here. And then we simplify first. We learned that, memorize that, right? We simplify first. And that means to distribute and combine like terms. So this side over here is already simplified, so I've got to simplify the right side. I distribute one half. And 1 half of 8x is 4x, and 1 half of negative 2 is negative 1. So all I did is multiply it, I distributed. Now I'm going to combine like terms. Again, this side simplified 4x plus 4x is 8x. Notice that I'm not doing inverse operations because they're on the same side. Now that I've simplified both sides, now I get my variable on one side. I can subtract 5x, and when I start moving stuff to the other side, that's when I do the opposite of what I see. So if I see positive 5x, I subtract 5x from both sides. That gets rid of my x's on one side. I have all my x's on the right side because 8x take away 5x is 3x. Now I can solve the equation by isolating the variable. We work farthest away from the variable first, do the 3 last, right? Again, we're doing inverse or opposite operations. Teams, these are opposite teams, so I subtract. Negatives have more. And then I divide by the coefficient to get my answer. Answer is negative 2. Number 3. So for number 3, we're going to need to look at the graph. Number three, we have a graph here. We're going to have to find the uh, slope of this and then compare these four slopes and say which one has a greater rate of change or a higher absolute value. So looking at the graph, I see that I have to rise up. It looks like I'm rising up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, right? But each one of these is worth four. So I'm not actually rising up seven. I'm actually rising up uh, four times seven, or I'm rising up uh, 28. So when I go up 28 and then over 1, see, because these aren't worth uh, 1 each, they're half each. So up 28 over 1, my slope is 28. So if I look at relation 1, relation 1 gives me two coordinates, and I go y minus y over x minus x, and I get a slope of 20. Well, that's not a greater absolute value than 28, so that's not steeper. Uh, relation 2, I have a table, and if you guys see the shortcut, you see it's proportional, you can take the shortcut if you don't remember what I'm talking about. Just to do it the same way we did the other one. Take two points, subtract y minus y over x minus x, and I want to point out that if I go right minus left on the top, that's okay as long as I go right minus left on the bottom. Sometimes it's a good idea to avoid negatives, but we can't always avoid negatives, right? Not with slope. And uh, so I can see that that has a greater rate of change because 30 has a greater absolute value than 28. So that's part of my answer. Relation 2 is part of my answer. Relation 3 is already in slope-intercept form, so the slope's just going to be the coefficient. My slope for that is negative 28 and 1 tenth, which has a greater absolute value or a greater rate of change than 28. And relation 4 is not in slope-intercept form yet. So you have to isolate the y. So we were farthest away from the y first. I subtract 8x from both sides. Remember, inverse operations when we're moving something, right? So don't forget that negative in front of the 2 there. And then I divide everything by negative 2. Remember, we learned in class that when we divide by, uh, by the uh, coefficient, divide everything, right? And negative divided by negative is positive, so I see that my slope is 40. So all those relations that have a greater rate of change than the graph was relations 2, 3, and 4. So now we're looking at problem number 4.
And for problem number four, uh, we had to uh, solve this so that we can pick which statement is true. Now, the smartest one of these to uh, isolate, the smart, smartest variable isolate is the one that has no coefficient, no number in front. So that's why I'm going to isolate this y in this equation. So I add 2x to both sides. Another way to say this same equation is this one right here. Now I can substitute this into the other equation to get the solution to the system. But it has to go where the y goes because that's what I isolated this time. So I rewrite this above equation over here. I write it again down here, but instead of putting y, y is all this. I put all this in parentheses, and we solve. So like we said before, we do our uh, rule for subtraction, distribute and combine like terms, or in other words, we simplify. And look, this is already opposite, so those cross out. When those cross out, if these two are not uh, the same number, then there's no solution. That means these two lines are parallel. They'll never intersect. There's not a solution. There aren't two coordinates that make both of these true. Okay? Now, know the other ones. If they are the same number, then it'd be infinitely many. And if you got, if they didn't cross out at all, you'd have x equals a number. Plug it back in here. Get your y. And that's how you pick your answer. Number five, <coughs> it says, an well, they give us one equation, right? And then they give us four more, and they say, which of these four other ones make infinitely many? So like I mentioned with that last problem, uh, we're trying to see, um, well, basically the short foot, shortcut for this one is to see which of these equations are the same as this. Because if they're the same, they'll, in, they'll intersect infinitely many times. They'll be in the same spot. So the easiest way to decide if they're the same equation, or if these two would make infinitely many solutions, is to see if they're the same line. So whatever I multiply x by to get negative x, I'd have to multiply these all by the same thing. If that's true, it's infinitely many solutions to the system. This is times negative 1. That's times negative 1. This is not times negative 1. That's times negative 3. So A is not the answer. B, be careful. I switched the order here. Do not let me trick you there. Watch your order. So compare y's with y's and x's with x's. So I'd have to uh, divide this by 3, and that would make that 3. But this gets multiplied times 3. Okay, so that's not the answer, obviously. And C, if I look at X, this is multiplied by negative 3. This one's multiplied by negative 3. 7 is also multiplied by negative 3. That's my answer. And the reason D doesn't work is because this is multiplied by negative 1. My axes are not multiplied by negative 1. So my answer has to be C for that problem. For problem number 6, we have two points and we have to find the equation. So equation, the two things we need, uh, as we memorize in class, we need slope and, and the y-intercept, right? So to get the slope, we go, again, y minus y over x minus x. Make sure if you're going right minus left, you go right minus left on the bottom. So I do add the opposite, add the opposite teams, and I get a slope of 21 thirds, which is a slope of 7. So now I'll take one of my points and my slope, and I plug it into y equals mx plus b. This is y, this is x, this is m. I plug those in. And then, I, and then I solve this to get b. So 7 times 1 is 7. Subtract 7 from both sides. And we have our y-intercept, our b. So now that I have my slope and my y-intercept, I can write the equation. y equals 7x plus 4, which is the same as y equals 4 plus 7x. For problem 7, they give us a graph. And we've got to write the equation for that one as well. So let's take a look at that graph. Remember, the two things we need are slope and y-intercept. Well, the y-intercept is pretty simple. It's right there at 30. It's where the line hits the y-axis. So to get the slope, I've got to take two points. And I see that I can, it looks like I can fall one and run one. It looks like a slope of negative one, doesn't it? But we have to be careful because these aren't counting by ones. Neither are these. So when I go down, actually use the one that says one. Use that one. Okay, don't use uh, 0.5 because then it gets complicated. So I'd have to go down 2 and over 2 to get to that, right? But it's not 2. Each one of these is counting by 3. So I, it's actually, I'm going down 6, not 2. And if I go over 2, I'm actually going over 1. So down 6 over 1 is a slope of negative 6. And if that doesn't work for you, you take two points, you get the coordinates, and you do exactly what we did on the last problem. Subtract your y, subtract your x's. Okay, so we have enough now to write the equation, and just be careful that they might switch the order on you. Just make sure if your coefficient is negative, it's negative right there also. So next problem, number eight, they give us uh, two irrational numbers, and they say if these form a right triangle, what are the other two possible lengths? And the reason they say that is because there's two ways you can set this up. You can make them both be legs, right? So you got a squared plus b squared equals c squared. We learned in class that the square root um, 
of a num of a irrational number, a square root squared, is just going to become the radicand inside, right? So when I add those two and take the square root of both sides, we get a perfect square. 31 times 31 is 961. Now the other option is you guys can take this instead of making it one of the legs, you make it the hypotenuse. It can't be this because remember hypotenuse has to be longer side. So again, when we square these, uh, rad 62 squared just becomes 62. The square root of 899 squared just becomes 899. The b squared is still squared, though. That doesn't magically become b. We have to mathematically make it become b like we made these. So I subtract 62 from both sides, and I get b squared equals 837. Now I take the square root of both sides. should be plus and minus, but since it's a, a length, we only use the principal or positive answer. And my two answers are 31 and rad 837. Next problem, number 9. <coughs> We are going to uh, answer this question. You see you're standing on a building. You drop a water balloon 40 feet down. So it's going straight down, right? So I got a uh, perpendicular distance there to the ground of 40. Now it makes a splash with the radius of 10. So in all directions, it splashes uh, 10 feet. So I can just take one direction here and go 10 that like that. And then it asks what's the distance from where it was dropped to the edge of the splash zone there. And this is just a Pythagorean theorem problem. I got leg squared plus leg squared equals hypotenuse squared. Square those doesn't mean multiply by 2, right? Add them up, take the square root of both sides, and at this point we'll be using a calculator so you can do rad 1700. Hit the square root button, do not divide by 2, and your answer is about 41 and 2 tenths feet. We're on number 10 now. A right triangle has a hypotenuse of 6 units in the length, okay? And it says it has a leg that's 9.1 units and it says find the exact length. Now this is a trick question. I don't usually give you guys trick questions um, but I did because um, I've seen something like this on the cast so we want to make sure that we are not totally uh, in inexperienced with this but if you're studying this right now this will be an easy point for you because it's literally going to be the same exact question as your study guide. So if you studied this you're going to get this right without any work. So let's take a look. First of all, hypotenuse has to be the longest side, doesn't it? So this is not possible. You can't have a hypotenuse of 6 and a leg of 9.1. That's a trick question. So we go down here. None of A and B can't work because that's saying that you can answer it, which you cannot. But you've got to be careful because there's two that say you cannot answer it. You have to pick the right one. So the reason you can't answer this is because the hypotenuse can't be shorter and has nothing to do with C. So you don't pick C on the test for that one. Problem 11, we have this graph. And we're going to do some transformations for this graph. First thing we're going to do, it looks like, is we're going to do a rotation, then we're going to do a dilation. Now, that's a pretty complicated problem, unless you just focus on the one point they tell you to focus on. They're, they tell us what's A double prime. In other words, after we do those two things, what's I? Uh, uh, I think I said A, maybe. I meant to say I. All right. So, looking at I, get the coordinates from I from the graph. The coordinates from I are negative 5, 3. So, for the first... Uh, Transformation, we have a 90 degree counterclockwise rotation, and we need to memorize those, those rules, right? Memorize 90, memorize 270, memorize 180, because you don't know exactly which one I'm going to give you on the test. So, um, the rule for that is switch the two coordinates and change the sign for the first, because remember we learned that first. And then from here, now we're at a, I prime. So, after this, we're going to do a dilation. Dilation with a scale factor of 2 means just multiplying by 2. That's it. I double prime has to be at negative 6, negative 10. Remember, scale factor means multiply. Number 12, they give us a line segment, and then they say it's dilated, and they ask us how long it is. Well, you've got to find the length of the first one first. So the endpoints for those are here, and to find the length between two points on a graph, we would just use the distance formula. X minus X squared plus Y minus Y squared. Take the square root of the whole enchilada. So I take X minus X, do the rule for subtraction, I get 6 squared plus 0 squared, which is rad 36 or 6. Now, L prime M prime is dilated with the scale factor of 0.5. Like we said on the last problem, when you got a scale factor, it means multiply, so it's going to be 3 units long. 13. We have a cylinder with the height of 10 inches and a diameter of 3.4 inches. They want the exact volume. Well, first of all, you have to get the radius. So if the diameter is 3.4, then the radius is 1.7 because that's half of 